All right, good morning, San Francisco. It's uh, great to be here and great to see you all. Um, so uh, the Integration Summit, WSO2 Integration Summit, is one of um, uh, many summits that we've been running this year across uh, 13 countries. Um, and in, in, in these summits, um, we bring together our community, our users, our, our customers, our partners. And we talk about, uh, we talk about open source, we talk about dig dig digital transformation, um, and how integration is a big part of digital transformation. And then we talk about APIs, how APIs are a big part of uh, um, um, integration itself. Um, and so through those, we, we learn from each other, we learn about the challenges, and we have so many conversations that help us in digital transformation journeys. It helps us, WSO2, in our, in our product journeys. So in terms of what we do as WSO2, I'll just keep it very simple. Right, so we, I don't know if you can see that, very in very simpli simplistic terms, we, we uh, build the technology and, the, and, and uh, work with our customers and users in helping them connecting systems, exposing them as APIs, and securing, securing all those integrations. And over the years, we've been in operation for 14 years now, we've worked with more than 1,000 enterprises, and we've seen it all. We've worked across all industries, we've worked across, I mean, done solutions architectures for all sorts of systems, mission critical systems, uh, uh, worked with all kinds of transaction volumes, deployment architectures, and through this we've gained so much of experience in terms of integration, and, and a lot of it is, and all of it is, everything that we get involved in is all open source. Um, so a little bit more about WSO2, we were founded back in 2005, uh, our founders, Dr. Sanjeev Aviravalna and Dr. Uh, Paul Fremantle, who's here with us today, um, so they had a vision to reinvent middleware using uh, web services and open source. And we've been very successful in that, and through that, I mean, over the years, we've now evolved into uh, a, a large company of 600 plus people. Um, uh, we operate in, we have officers in, um, 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 eight officers in six countries now. Our latest being Berlin, just a few months ago. We uh, opened office in Sydney about a year ago. Um, and we have 500 customers. Uh, uh, 500 customers from 65 countries, and just last year we added 130 new cu new customers. Um, from a financial perspective as well, we are growing. Um, last year we grew 50%. Uh, our financials are open, by the way. We are a privately held company, but our financials are open, um, and we follow a lot of open principles. We want to be transparent on this. Um, we, 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 we exited the year at uh, 37 million in annualized uh, recurring revenue, revenue. That's how we measure ourselves. So we've been doing great. The last three years, we've been enjoying 30 to 50% growth on that. And everything we do is open source. We are very passionate about open source. Uh, we have 300 engineers who we believe have done over, over a million contributions to open source over the years. Uh, we are the sixth largest uh, Apache contributor, and, uh, it's, and it's not just the technology. Everything we do, um, uh, for example, legal. We have a team, a legal team, who works with our customers, with enterprises, with users, to make them more comfortable in terms of working with open source. Because as soon as you say open source, there are, there are companies out there who are you know, taken aback and see it as a, as a, as a risky uh, endeavor. So, uh, um, so we've, as a, as a business, as a business model, um, we've, we've catered to that on that, so it's um, um, pretty much open. Um, so uh, getting into the, uh, the content itself, so there's an observation made by Gartner uh, um, last year, 2018 this was, um, and uh, um, some of it is rather obvious. So. A lot of the enterprises are going digital, they're building digital platforms, we're talking about uh, digital transformation. It's, 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 it's required for sustainability now, it's uh, um, required to differentiate, gain competitive advantage. Um, so in terms of uh, getting on this whole digital transformation and building digital apps, a lot of the work, the effort, the time, the cost involved is becoming more integration related. And, and, and moving away from you know, pure software, software projects there, which means obviously the projects are now more driving towards integration projects. The, the developers are becoming integration developers, and a lot of that work is going to be around, uh, um, around APIs. Um, so if you look at the scale and the volume and the, and the amount of change that is happening in the industry now, um, and, and if you look at the, how architectures have evolved, if you look at the, the traditional monolithic and enterprise type architectures, they are not geared towards dealing with that change, dealing with the change, dealing with the scale that is required and dealing to market conditions. If you want to have that level of change, you, need, you, you see suppliers 
moving and evolving the architectures now, moving from a you know more monolithic enterprise type architect architectures to to uh, serverless microservices type architectures, and that is basically you know creating so many endpoints there and creating a, a new challenge in terms of integrating and integrating with uh, with hybrid uh, hybrid architectures there. And with all those architectures and, and the scale involved there, the best way to integrate there then is becomes the APIs. And the APIs become the glue uh, um, for, for that effort. So, um, and so, so this is where you're starting to see that scale now. APIs, you talk about APIs everywhere. I just go, to go, to go out of the hotel, I saw both the advertising something to do with APIs. You go on the one-on-one, -on -one, you see at least two billboards talking about APIs and how APIs are going to help you. You wake up in the morning, you read the news, you check your weather, you, you do you look at, uh, get your train tickets, check train times, um, anything. You tell Alexa to put on your lights, it's all APIs there. Right? So it's, it's just this API is taking over the world, and this is why we are calling it API-driven world. And some of these metrics here are slightly dated, but we, we believe that these metrics are, it's probably in the 40% range now, where APIs now account for, you know, 25 to 40% of all of the internet traffic. Um, and, 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 you know, 30%, 40% of the world's revenue is now flowing through APIs. So that is enormous scale. That we're talking about enormous scale there uh, in terms of managing that. And, and this is where we come in, providing a, a open source platform to manage integration leading with APIs, with leading with API management. Just the other day I was reading an article on Forbes, um, it was talking about how the most successful digital, uh, um, uh, digital transformation um, uh, efforts, the ones that are most successful have a very strong API management strategy built into their overall technology strategy. Right, so API management becomes a uh, critical part of it, and this is why the WC2 as WC2, our platform leads with API management. We have a full lifecycle API management platform, which helps you to design your APIs, publish your APIs, look at the analytics around the APIs, um, um, and, and you know provide even marketplace and mon monetization uh, so, um, capabilities. And uh, over the years, we believe we are managing more than 20,000 uh, APIs now, which touch at least 200,000 organizations globally. Um, so in addition to API management, we, uh, we have uh, the traditional ESB type integration capabilities which are required for you know, transformation, mediation, business process management, workflows, etc. And of course, when you bring all these things together, uh, the, the integrations and you know, API management, you need a way to secure them. You need a way to secure the integrations, secure your, uh, your APIs, um, and then provide you know, features like federation and, and single sign-on. So that is where the identity management piece comes into the platform. Right, so this, this, the, these three pillars are what, what leads us into uh, the, the WC2 platform. Um, 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 so, um, just some of the analysts, or what the analysts are talking about us. So, 2018, 2019 has been great for open source. Um, 2018, for example, there's so much of m &A activity happening uh, around open source. Red Hat, uh, Mulesoft, uh, Red Hat, uh, IBM deal, $34 billion. Um, MuleSoft um, Salesforce, $6.5 billion, and so many other acquisitions happening there uh, around, which, which actually put, a, uh, put the spotlight on open source there. So Gartner, last year, published a report um, where they recognized WSO2 as being the number one open source integration suite. And this was purely based on integration-related revenues uh, when you take a, t t take a company, um, the, all the companies that are involved in this space. Um, so that was great for us. Uh, if you are following Forrester, Forrester Wave, um, the Forrester Wave, recognized as a leader. Uh, this was again last year, uh, and placed us right up there with IBM, Google, um, um, uh, and, and Software AG. It's a big deal for us. We were very excited about this, and this is uh, uh, really helpful. Um, on the um, identity management side, Kapinja Cole, this is an analyst mostly operating in Europe. So this year's report just came up uh, probably about a month ago. Um, and they had plastered WSO2 all over that report in terms of being a market leader, innovation leader, product leader, and overall leader. Again, really great. I mean, we are just uh, uh, right there with the, with the top players in this market. Um, so from an analyst perspective, we've been performing really great, and we are working with the analysts closely um, as, we, as we move on on that. Um, so uh, a few user stories in terms of how we've been helping our customers. Everyone knows StubHub, um, uh, online ticket sales for, for events. So if you purchase a ticket on StubHub, that ticket, that transaction happens through WSO2. Um, and, and 
We estimate about a billion transactions going through uh, uh, WSO2 on a daily basis. So um, StubHub is an eBay company as well. So eBay is also a customer of ours. eBay, uh, uh, on, on, on average day, there's about 6 billion transactions going through WSO2. And we believe on, a, on, on peak, at peak, on, on Black Friday, for example, it goes up to 12 or 15 billion transactions through WSO2 there. Um, transport for London, uh, or TFL, um, uh, so the, the, this is the, the, the uh, Transport Management uh, Authority in London. Um, so all the road, uh, rail, and other commuter systems, the, the, the um, data from all these systems are collected and pumped into their business intelligence systems through WSO2. And then that data is then used for, for making critical decisions around safety on a daily basis. It becomes a very critical part of uh, uh, their, their platform. So all happening through WSO2 there, all happening through APIs. Um, Jaguar Land Rover, uh, another significant customer for us in Europe. So if you go into the, 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 the Jaguar Land Rover website and you want to do a customization, you want to customize your, 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 your flashy new car, you do the customizations on that and that, that order hits the warehouses and the factories to WSO2. It's again calling APIs, um, another significant customer for us. Um, Wells Fargo, everyone knows Wells Fargo. Um, so Wells Fargo does a lot of their integration work using WSO2, and then they expose that. They expose that to their suppliers and partners in terms of capabilities around data services, around payments, so that these third parties or their partners can access those. Again, uh, all API-driven, all API, uh, WSO2 APIs, uh, API management there. Uh, Bank of New York Mellon. So Bank of New York Mellon, another significant customer of ours. Um, so they build this next-gen digital ecosystem. Um, um, uh, the, the whole purpose of this is to basically accelerate fund transfers happening through tens of thousands of credit unions in the U.S. So this again is, is, is a highly critical platform for them. Uptime and uh, um, um, you know, the efficiency of the system is very uh, uh, key to that platform. So it's again running uh, pretty much on, on WSO2 APIs. Um, if you're following what's happening in the banking sector in Europe, and it's not only Europe now, it's, it's spreading to, uh, it is, it's catching up in, in Latin America, Australia. There's regulation coming into play uh, in Europe, for example, there's regulation called PSD2, where these bank, banks and financial institutes are, are, are required to expose their capabilities to third parties, to expose it to, to you know, one is to uh, provide more value-added services, provide more revenue-generating uh, opportunities, and, and basically scale. So again, um, uh, um, this is um, I think the, the this regulation started in Europe. It's it's happening in other parts of the world. So what we've done, we built a solution around this. We call it the Open WC2 Open Banking. We brought together the capabilities of API management, um, um, uh, enterprise integrator, and identity. Brought it all together um, to build this solution where our banks, financial ins institutions can. Um, expose these APIs uh, and, and manage that with third parties uh, just out of the box and comply with regulation and also gain advantage around that. So we have some significant customers around there as well, mostly in Europe, but we are, we are, we are, we are seeing a lot of traction around this in, in other parts as well where open banking is becoming common. Um, so right, so along with that, so basically, five, as I said earlier, we have 500 customers across all industries, uh, and, and they place trust in us for, for years. Some of these customers have been there. eBay has been there st from the start of the company. Um, um, crossing all industries, if you look at our pipeline now for the next two quarters, there's some very significant logos that are going to be there in, in, the, in, the, in the next time we evolve this picture, and it's going to be a lot more co colorful. Um, so, so what are customers subscribe to, and these are mostly subscri subscription customers here. Uh, if, uh, if you become a, a customer and you subscribe to WSO2, uh, it's pretty much about a, a, a range of services that we provide. You get access to WSO2 updates, of course. You get access to the latest binaries, which will include bug fixes, security updates, you know, performance improvements, and some features as well. And, and, and if you're on the, on the latest version, from the time you get that latest, the, 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 the new version, we will support you on that for up to 10 years. Um, security vulnerabilities, a very key feature in terms of the service we provide. There are, there's continuous assessment and monitoring of vulnerabilities, and the security bulletins are published, and you get access to the security bulletins on that. Um, incident response. This is why uh, a lot of our customers, especially enterprise customers, subscribe to us, because of this 24-7 global SLA that we provide. 
when it comes to incident management. And it's pretty much a, a, a influence there. And, and, and um, depending on the use case, depending on the complexity, we'll also get assigned a, a technical account manager who will be there as a single point of content as in when you need on that. Um, Query support, we support you through your development journey, uh, we, we, through a uh, number of hours that you, you get from us in terms of asking us questions about how to develop, how, how do you get through any issues you're having in your development journey and helping you through you know, the sandboxes, the de development environments or any, any, any issues you have around that. Um, uh, 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 another service that is gaining a lot of popularity with us is managed services, managed cloud. And this is basically taking away the headache from you in terms of managing your infrastructure, managing your integration, managing the deployment, and, 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 and keeping it up to date. And this is something that we offer our customers uh, 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 and then deploy it on a on, um, uh, chosen platform. Um, and then, of course, you get consulting services where we will help you through your development journey and make sure you successfully go into, into uh, take you into production. And even after that, to make sure we do uh, uh, regular reviews on your architecture, on your deployment, and make sure you can upgrade um, and, and have a successful journey around that. Um, so that's all great. Um, so when we talk to our customers, when we talk to our partners, uh, our users, they said, no, great, you have great technology out there, you're a great platform. So but what next? What is going to be next? How are you going to help us? How are you going to assure us of the future? Things are changing, the industry is changing, the technology is changing. How, what does it mean for the future? What are you doing about you know, making sure that we, our technology that we are, we, are, we, are, we are getting from you is future-proof? So, so we take a lot of insight from how our products are performing across the territories, across regions. There are some, uh, you know, we go into some conversations in some regions. You start the conversation by talking about microservices or containerized deployments. There are some, some other territories where you still open a conversation by, say, by, by first saying, first talking about what an API is. So that's how, how, how diverse the, 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 the need for the technology is. So we take a lot of that input. Uh, we talk to our customers, we talk to our partners, we talk to our users, the community, and we look at competition. We look at how the industry is evolving. Right? And, then we, and, and then there's a lot of research that goes into what, what should, be doing, should we be doing next. Um, so in terms of the trends and the observations that we are working on now, and this is what is going into our products now for the next 12 to 18 months maybe, uh, we see integration moving to the cloud, moving away from those, you know, from, from you know, monolithic architectures, from heavyweight infrastructure, moving to the cloud now. And, and in, the, in the process of the transition, you see integration in terms of uh, uh, the need for hybrid integration, you see the need for integration happening across multiple clouds. Right, so that makes it a more complex problem there. Again, along with that, which means their integration technology now needs to be uh, uh, more cloud native. Right, if you are going to be supporting all those cloud use cases, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud, mega cloud scenarios, you need to. Your technology has to be cloud native, which basically means you know be able to build lightweight applications, faster boot up time, and able to integrate. Uh, in, in a decentralized microservices environment. Um, we see a, a, a change in, in the developer mindset as well. Developers are now moving towards, you know, the, there, is a, there is a need to build applications faster and have more control on the integrations and the applications that you build. They're basically moving to more code-driven integration from, from the traditional uh, um, config-based integration where developers see themselves as being constrained. So, um, um, so again, that is that has taken. We've taken a lot of input from that. They want integration into uh, continuous integration, continuous deployment, and more automated DevOps environments uh, uh, capabilities. So that's all input that we've now taken in into what do we do next? How do we evolve our product products from here? What what's our product roadmap? Um, so what you will see in the next you know um, um, uh, 12 to 18 months in terms of how our products are evolving is. Evolving the products that I was describing earlier, evolving all all of those into being truly cloud native. You will see, begin to see more micro versions of our products coming out. Uh, 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 micro five, for example, API Manager will be a micro gateway, uh, micro gateway to uh, um, um, on, on um, enterprise integrator. There's a micro integrator that gives you the same same uh, integration capabilities, but be able to be more you know more cloud native, more lightweight in terms of that. Um, we'll be supporting, you know, more containerized 
command line driven and integration into uh, continuous development and, and DevOps and all that. Um, we also see development communities, the, the, the mindset they are changing again, where we, we see smaller development teams focusing on, 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 on integration. Um, uh, and then, you know, Paul will talk uh, uh, about the, the composable enterprise uh, shortly. Um, but this is where smaller development teams, they take ownership for, for uh, um, smaller integration projects. They take ownership for the, the security, the DevOps, the testing, everything that's happening there. And they collaborate using APIs. And this is what causes, creates that composable enterprise. So a lot of how we develop, how our, our platform uh, um, uh, is, is will be supporting that type of development environment as well. Um, I spoke about you know the developer centric nature of um, uh, where integration is heading. So I'll talk uh, briefly talk about Ballerina in a bit, but um, we will begin to see our products supporting uh, code driven integration. Um, and and I'll quickly, I'll shortly talk about some of the releases that are happening today as well. Um, um, and then again, with the, the push towards the cloud, we will start to see a lot of tooling coming from us that's going to help you manage those workloads across hybrid clouds and, and, and multi-clouds. We are focusing a lot on product experience. Um, historically, we, we've found the need to you know, uplift our product experience, looking at the competing products out there and looking at from a you know, psychology perspective, how can you, uh, what's the best approach to use our products? It's not just about the UI, how do you find our products? How do you install our products? What is the first 10 minutes experience on our products, uh, with, with our products? How do you update our products? What's the documentation experience like? So there's a lot of effort going into that now uh, across all our products uh, um, uh, from a product and develop experience. Um, so that's from a conceptual level, that's what we are building into our, our roadmap. Um, I'll, I'll talk about a few things that are just uh, happening right in the background now. Ballerina has, uh, who, who, who has heard about Ballerina? Uh, this is not, not the dancer Ballerina, this is the, uh, the, the programming language. Can I see a show of hands, please? Uh, yeah, so we need to do a bit more work on that. <laughs> All right, so, so we are very excited about this. This is a, a, a research project, a research and development effort that went um, for the last three years that we've been working on. Again, learning from our community, learning from how, um, uh, how developers want to build those integrations. Uh, um, and, and, and taking a more code first approach to integration. So th and, and what the, the basic premise is, building the abstractions that are required for distributed and network computing into the language. So these capabilities are then natively available so that developers can, can build more resilient, secure, and lightweight integrations and applications that can support those integration uh, use cases. So we are really excited about this. There's going to be a lot of ballerina getting built into our products, as you, as you see, and it's also available as a standalone language. Um, celery, it's not the celery that you eat. Uh, um, so again, this is thought leadership, looking at how the industry is performing now. We see uh, 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 explosion around microservices and serverless functions. So Celery is uh, um, basically aggregating those serverless functions and, and microservices into what we call a cell. So there's a white paper that has been produced by uh, uh, Paul and Asanka, who's our deputy CTO. Um, they'll be talking a, a lot more about this uh, uh, later on. But this pretty much becomes a, a code-first approach to building and integrating and deploying these, these cells through Kubernetes and help you manage those workloads, especially in an in a environment where you have the scale, the, this level of scale around microservices and, and um, Kubernetes now. Um, so we are again very excited about this. It's still in evolution. We are just releasing uh, point, uh, zero point 0.4 of this tool. Um, and then just a sneak peek on some of the products. We just released Enterprise Integrator 7.0 just this morning, two hours ago. Uh, some significant features here. There's a lot of work that has gone into uh, the overall product experience here. And, and that continues to evolve. Ballerina is now part of Enterprise Integrator. You can take a code first approach to, to, to integration around that. Um, um, and, and we believe that's going to significantly change the developer experience in terms of how you how you do integration and then uh, around those you know traditional ESP type capabilities. Uh, micro integrator it has been there for a while, but it's also part of um, the overall integration story for us. It's low code configuration driven approach, but uh, uh, supporting those more lightweight um, integration scenarios there. Uh, 
Um, now there's native support uh, for Docker and Kubernetes. Again, this is moving our products towards the whole uh, being more cloud native and truly cloud native. Siddhi as a stream, uh, uh, stream Siddhi, so Siddhi based, so we, we had a, a stream processor which we used to call, um, it was, we actually had multiple names for that. It used to be called uh, stream processor, the last. It's based on a, a technology that we donated to Apache, it's called Siddhi. So that is now built into Enterprise Integrate as well. Right, to provide you with the streaming capability and uh, around integrations. Um, so that's Enterprise Integrator, just fresh off the um, um, servers. Or you know <laughs> um, so that, that's we're very excited about that. Um, API Manager 3.0, uh, another very significant release for us. Uh, it's coming out in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, again, a lot of work has gone into so API management is, is uh, the, as a product is 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 uh, one of the very popular products for us. We put in a lot of effort now into the overall developer and product experience when it comes to API management. So there's a lot of improvements around you know providing separate portals now for for the developer and the consumer, which is, helps you uh, a lot in that journey. Again, moving towards that whole being cloud native, uh, being cloud native, APIs are now treated as first class citizens in Kubernetes, which you know helps you in those hybrid hybrid type use cases, and then you know, several other features as well. Um, so this morning again, we released the latest version of Identity Server. Uh, uh, there's a lot of work going to so this Identity Server version 5.9. Um, quite a few features released there as well. You see a uh, configuration model, again, something, a pain point that we listened to our customers and, and our users was around how, how complex it was earlier to configure identity server. So there's a massive amount of work gone in there. It's very simple now, just one configuration file to help you get running and up and running on, on identity server. And so many other features around so self-services and um, 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 other you know, product experience features there. Um, so Celery, I just spoke about Celery earlier. It's still in evolution. This is point, uh, version 0.4. Uh, we are doing some work around you know, managing the state of a cell. Uh, uh, naked cells, I don't know why Paul wants to call it a naked cell, but uh, <laughs> that's, that's what they're calling it. It's basically an empty cell, which the developers and, and we have more control in terms of configuring it any way they want um, uh, when you're bundling the microservices and serverless functions into that. So there's a lot, a lot of work going in there. So again, I think it's, it, it comes down to the work that is going in on a continuous basis, all the research that is going in to make sure that we provide our customers and our users with the best or the most simple uh, uh, um, um, experience on integration. We want to intensely simplify integration and that's a journey. That's, we're on a journey to do that. It's a continuous journey. There's no real destination, but the commitment from us uh, to our users and our, 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 our customers is that we will continue to evolve on this. We are not going to stop by, and, and just because the product is successful, we are not going to just stop there. We will continue to evolve that journey um, and, and make sure that you have the best experience and uh, the, the optimal experience around that.